Aloha, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Thinking Things Through, Thinking Critically in Critical Times. I'm your host, Michael Sukoff. Today we have with us Michael J. Thompson, Professor of Political Theory at William Patterson University in Wayne, New Jersey. We're going to be discussing critical theory, what it is, why it matters. And in the interest of full disclosure, Michael Thompson and I have known each other as professional colleagues for a number of years, and both of us currently are working on books in the general area of critical theory, as Michael is going to talk with us about shortly. Welcome to the show, Michael. Hi, Michael. Thanks for having me. Yeah, you're very welcome. Now, you've written a lot in the area of critical social and political theory, which we'll get into in a moment. Uh, you've also written widely in the related areas of uh, critical reason, the politics of inequality, political judgment, and the decline of the individual in late capitalist societies. In addition, you're also a practicing psychoanalyst. Is there anything you'd briefly like to add about your background and interests? Uh, well, I, I suppose, um, um, you know, a lot of the interests that I have now stem from my own work doing um, some union organizing and journalism back when I was younger. So I do have a more pop, you know, more kind of civic engagement streak. Um, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. Great. Well, um, let's let's push ahead. Uh, so first of all, let's start off with uh, briefly, what, what is critical theory? How do you define the term? Critical theory is, um, I think, a term that confuses more than it clarifies. I think the most important thing to do is to think about what the word critique really means. Yes. Um, and the word critique uh, is actually a Greek word. Um, and in the Greek word from which critique comes means to judge something, means to mm -hmm. judge the capacity to judge um what something is and also to evaluate critical theory i think is a way of thinking about the world that asks us to gives it asks us to inquire about um what forms of life what kind of practices and activities that we do um what is what is the good what mm -hmm. is justice what is um, a healthy form of life, way of interacting, way of living, way of being? And critical theory really emerged out of the 19th century and early 20th century struggle around, particularly at coming out of Marxism, mm -hmm. um, and the need for uh, political activism to consider the role of consciousness the role yes. of, of how everyday people think and feel about the world. Because the assumption before critical theory was on the left, uh, particularly on the Marxist left, but even the non-Marxist left was the idea that um, things in society are getting so bad. You know, industrialism is destroying our, our world and inequality is really terrible. Things are getting so bad that there's going to be an automatic correction. There's going to be a revolution. There's going to be some radical change that's going to happen. People are just not going to take it anymore. And what people, what people found was that that wasn't happening, that people were not just joining movements, that people were not really rebelling. So the question that critical theorists started to ask was, what, what, is the, what are the reasons that people who yes. may be screwed over by the system, to use a kind of street way of thinking about talking about it, actually many times join with the system, um, do not actually join in overthrowing the systems that oppress them right. or dominate. In fact, they may very well do the opposite. All too often, they may, in fact, join in to repress their own freedom. Yeah. And so this is a kind of riddle, if you want to look at it that way, yeah. a riddle of history yeah. that critical theorists really sought to open up and to understand. Right. Now, uh, I, I just want to put in the background here for some of our viewers and listeners may not know uh, what Marxism is, or they may not know what more, more uh, relevant 
what's the relationship between Marxism and critical theory? So you don't need to answer that directly right now, but I'd like to kind of touch on that uh, at some point. Now, um, uh, critique, right. Uh, what are some of the other uh, two or three other main that you would see as main characteristics of critical theory as compared with you know, so-called mainstream or traditional forms of theory in the social yeah. sciences? You know, it's a great question. The idea of theory, when you learn it in, in grammar school and high school, for example, and college, um, is the idea, of, and theory is also a Greek word. Theory is, uh, is right. a word that means knowledge or to know something. Um, what's interesting about what you call traditional theory or what one of the founders of critical theory, a guy named Max Horkheimer, uh, called traditional theory also, is the idea that um, you can, to study something and know it, uh, you have to somehow constrain your values. You have to constrain your values about whether something is good in order to understand what something is. Right. And critical theory says that this is really possible. Critical theory uh, wants to say, that to, to really understand what a thing is, you really need to understand what the good or the full expression of a thing is. Mm -hmm. And the idea is that knowledge about the world can't be cleansed of our judgment or our evaluation. Right. To simply say like, well, I know what a tree is, but you really only know what a tree is if you really know what, the kind of full, perfect idea of what treeness is. Because then you like, can a lot like Plato, doesn't it? Exactly. And I think that's where Plato's where the concept of dialectic really begins. Okay. Well, let's so not get Plato too far. Yeah. We'll but, get to but, that. But, my, but, my, but really, it's a distinctive way of thinking about the world. Because okay. it's the idea that to know something is also to know what, what the good of that thing is. And I think there's a third feature that's really important, which is critical theory aims not simply at knowledge, but the transformation of the way that we live our lives and therefore of social reality. It aims at change. It aims at yeah. alteration and progress and growth and mutation of, of the world around us. Because all too often, we live in a world now, I believe, that all too often we feel alienated from. Right. That it's mechanistic, that it, uh, it's uh, impenetrable to, to our will. Um, we look at our world as we're kind of alienated from, from, from right. the dynamic lives we, that, that, that we lead. So critical theory wants to say that um, our social reality is changeable. Right. It is subject to our transformation. And therefore, uh, critical reason is uh -huh. meant to help us shape and reshape an actually lived life. Not just a theory about how the world could be, but rather how, how uh, the lives that we live can actually be changed and transformed. Through. Now, this is, uh, if you don't mind my interrupt, this is very interesting because I can see someone uh who doesn't think this way or has maybe not even the foggiest idea what you're getting at say wow this is this is such a biased way of looking at the world you bring your values and your judgments as uh, into it as to how are you going to make the world a better place how dare you the idea that we should bring our values in was always the kind of well this is the thing about modern science modern scientific yeah. reading uh -huh. yeah when talking about nature it was very important, philosophers of the Enlightenment correctly saw, um, to separate our values about nature from nature itself because of the way pre-modern uh, relations to nature were structured. So you would yeah. say, oh, you know, a tidal wave occurred because we did something bad in the world and therefore we're being right. punished for the tidal wave or the tornado or the hurricane. Right, but, uh, but critical theory is trying to say no, no, no. To understand the world of of, of human relationships, of our political lives, we yes. cannot separate our values right. from our knowledge. And any attempt to separate values from knowledge is an attempt at control. Oh, very it's interesting. An attempt at domination is an attempt to in, for the powerful to insert their ideas 
about what is good and what ah, is beneficial. Okay, well, I want you to carry that theme forward uh, as we as we move on, especially when we get to uh, talking about you know critical theory and politics. Uh, let me let me just ask you. Um, in your work, you state, and I'm I'm quoting here that many different kinds of theory lurk under the banner of what's called critical theory, quote unquote. You go on to say that to do this is, and, and I'm paraphrasing here, to commit an error about what critical theory and what critique actually are. Could you please elaborate on that point, what you mean? Yeah, I, I think um, academic uh, theory has become so, dis so just um, abstruse and separated from everyday people's lives. Critical theory is a very complicated philosophical, there are a lot of texts that are very difficult to read, a lot of ideas that are very complex, to be honest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. However, even though that's the case, I think what's at the heart of critique as cri and critical theory is, as I said before, is the idea that um, you need to posit something new in the world. You need to try to change the world, not only try to understand the way that the world is dominating you, right? but also to, to use that in a way to try to create the new, to try to articulate and transform the world to make it a better place. Um, Often what I was, time, yeah, I'm uh, sorry, to interrupt. just what I was trying to get at is, uh, let's use the example of critical race theory. And there are other versions you know, feminism, postmodernism that may show up under the banner or get labeled as critical theory. So what's 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 the mistake there? I think the mistake is if you think about critical race theory or post-colonial theory or these kinds right. of theoretical ide uh, ideas, is that they really don't have anything to offer in the place of what they're what they're what they are uh, positioned oh. against. Uh -huh. Post-colonialism is an example. It's like there are many post-colonial peoples. They've been dominated. Their culture has been shaped and affected their political systems. Right. But where does that lead us? Where does that leave us in terms of struggling for something new? Right. So the theory, the, it, it remains an academic theory, critical race theory also, um, to try to pick out the racial and racist yeah. dimension and dynamics of modern institutions. That's very important to do. Yes. But the question of critical theory is, what kind of world, what would be necessary? What transformations of our relations to each other and our institutions would be necessary to, to make a world where that would no longer be the case? Right. So critical theory asks us about, um, asks about it, it, it creates a demand on us to think about what freedom would be like not in terms of some liberal idea of a principle of freedom, but right. what would it be like to live in a world where our relations to others and, right. um, and our activities are really free? And in this way, I actually think feminism is closer to critical theory uh -huh. because feminism, especially in the, the kind of feminism from the 60s and 70s, right. was very anti-hierarchical, very uh, positive an idea of an alternative way of relating right, right. to one another. So actually, yeah. I think feminism is a strong example of something mm -hmm. that, that, comes, that, that really intersects with critical theory, because yeah. you're, you're basically saying the way the world is now is wrong, and there is an alternative. There's an alternative mm -hmm. way of living. Right. The way I like to think about it, uh, and I'm assuming you probably agree with me, though, maybe not. Uh, I like to think of the critical theory of the Frankfurt School. It was, a, it was a type of theory that actually developed in a way out of Marxism. And that, that's a loaded, loaded term there, you know, out of, but we, we don't have time to go there. So there was a type of theory that was called critical theory, initially done by um, uh, folks in, in Germany, uh, starting in the early 20s. And they actually used the term critical theory, at least this is my understanding, because they didn't want to say Marxism. Yes, that's that, right. But, but there's also differences between their critical theory and straight line orthodox Marxist uh, theory. But we don't have time to go there. I just wanted to throw that in. Uh, now I, I want to move on and see how, how we can use critical theory to think through some issues in the world. And, you know, I'm thinking about, um, for example, 
One would be, you know, here in, in the US, the rise of the Republican right and the growth of authoritarian and neo-fascist movements in the US and of course abroad. Um, so what I wanna ask you is not, not only to say whatever you have to say about that from a critical theoretical point of view, could you emphasize how and why being able to think through issues like these in this kind of critical way is important to the very notion of, of doing critical theory? Well, first of all, going back to your discussion about the Frankfurt School, yeah. uh, that, dis that kind of moment of the origins of what we call critical theory today. Yes. Yes. One of the most important research um, areas of, that, of the Frankfurt School was the intersection of psychoanalysis. Absolutely. And, and, oh, yeah. uh, and the application of that um, was trying to understand the rise of fascism in Absolutely. Germany, in particular, yeah. the, in particular the rise of Hitler. So right. the idea of authoritarianism, mm -hmm. of radical right-wing fascism in, uh, uh, in the 1930s, 1920s and 30s in Europe right. was, a, was the real object of study. Today, uh -huh. We are witnessing a return. We are witnessing a return to of, of neo-fascist movements and a kind of right-wing authoritarian populism. Okay. And critical theory has a lot to, to, to tell us about this. And I think one of the most right. salient ideas is this um, incapacity for individuals, really, to this need that they have in a world that is so alienating to right. find some form of uh something that gives them inner strength meaning and and, and meaning in the world and yeah. someone like donald trump or um kind of a leader a powerful leader yeah. actually and this is some this is the insight of the frankfurt school theorists that psychologically yeah. the weak weakened individuals need need and vulnerable individuals remember you have to remember that this is not only people who people who are intolerant Really, and psychoanalysis tells us this, intolerance is really an expression of people's vulnerabilities, that they're in, un, unable to tolerate their vulnerabilities. And so what they do is follow the, the strong man. They yes. follow yes. The, the, the one who will crush right. the, uh, those that they see as unwa unwanted. And right. that dynamic is, is playing itself out in Western polities now, in the, in yeah. the United States, in France, in the UK, in Germany, in Italy, in Spain, there is there are very strong right wing movements, and yes. I think this is happening as capitalism as a system uh -huh. is going to excess. In that inequality is growing, that alienation is increasing, that technological mastery over people's everyday lives is expanding, that people are feeling disempowered in their everyday lives, and they're not fighting back in a progressive way. They're fighting back in a reactionary way. They yeah. want, they, they, and they, they're seeking that security. They're seeking a return to hierarchy and they're seeking a return to group narcissism by their own identity as being superior over others. Right. And this is right. one of the ingredients that the Frankfurt School pointed out in the 1930s and 40s. Uh -huh. And these are, the, these are the same dynamics that are returning in right. your Western European and North American right. political culture. Now I want to uh, just, you know, for the in the interest of time, I want to pivot to some other issues that may not immediately seem related to what you're talking about, but uh, in fact they probably are. Uh, what I'm thinking about, uh, you know, is what's going on uh, with the Russia's invasion and war against Ukraine, you know, and the challenges that that poses to world peace and security. You know, and, and particularly, uh, you know, with the recent ex 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 escalation in geopolitical tension and the potential, potential for direct military confrontation between the U.S., the other NATO countries and Russia. Um, how can we use critical theory to make sense of, of what's going on there um, and or what other tools would we need to bring in in order to um, think critically about what's going on? with this, you know, very frightening situation right now. I mean, it is, it's a terrifying situation. Yeah. Um, it's a terrifying situation. And I think that critical theory's contribution here um, is somewhat out of sync with what's happening. Critical theorists uh -huh. saw in the 1950s 
warned in the 1940s and 50s and even before that, that the technology, um, the technological expansion of, of the means of destruction were right. outstripping the humanistic values uh-huh. needed yes. to, to, to constrain them. Right. And so I think what the real fear here is, um, critical theory really didn't have anything to say about international relations. It didn't have anything to say about any of this. But um, but it does have a it does ask us to at least think about the ways that the world that we've created is it fundamentally irrational. That we've created a world where we create weapons of destruction at one another, where we compete over scarce resources that destroy the planet, that the whole moral, ethical, and political system upon which it's built is fundamentally irrational. Right. There's no reason why. In a rational perspective, that Russia shouldn't be cooperatively, in, you know, integrated into European, you know, life. All of the, and then because within Russia itself, there's been a conquering of the media over a period of 20, 25 years. It's also happening here. This is another thing that the Frankfurt School saw that the Nazis were uh, were uh, a very adept at using radio and television to control mass opinion and uh-huh. control public debate. Russia is an example of this. The United States is seeing increasingly a privatization of right. media. And right. I think that's causing, the, causing a lot of the polarization. So critical theory has a lot to offer here. What's the truth? What's the news? What, what are we doing to each other? Right, right. And I, I just, yeah, just want to bring in the, the, the nuclear weapons issue. Um, and I agree with you that uh, I don't think the, the first generation, the r- original members of the critical theory of the Frankfurt School really thought a whole lot about that. Um, well, they may have towards, towards, towards their latter years. I'm not aware of anything they wrote, but they did talk about the domination of nature and the ways in which human societies and capitalism in particular has repressed nature both externally and within ourselves and it's kind of like to use a you know very uh you know untheoretical phrase the chickens are coming home to roost yeah what do you think about the relationship there between the critical th- theory and their analysis of the domination of nature and the fact that we're we've been living on the precipice of nuclear holocaust on and off for many well, years now you know it goes back to your initial question about blending moral values with scientific with scientific reason yeah. it goes back to the idea fundamental idea about critical theory which yes. is fundamental humanism and i think the very idea of the domination of nature of seeing nature as an object of our power yes of nature being there for our use is one of the most immoral irrational and self-destructive uh-huh aspects of modernity, of the modern right. world, of capitalism, of industrialism, of, techno- right. of, te- of technology. Critical theory holds out the promise for us that we can reconcile ourselves with nature, that human beings can find some form of kind of way of progressing ourselves morally without destroying yeah. the physical and natural world. Right. And all right. is required is a critique of the values that we are okay. taught every day. Okay, I want to, again, in the interest of time, this is such a great conversation, we're fast running out of it, but um, I want to talk about uh, concrete ways of critique uh, where critical theory would be re- very relevant here. Uh, uh, you know, the, and there's a, the practical question, which I, I want to get to is uh, soon and at the end, why should critical theory matter to members of our audience here? Why should it matter to them? And why should thinking critically in the ways you are suggesting be important to them as citizens of a supposedly, quote unquote, democratic society? I don't want you to answer that right now, but I wanna put that kind of in the background. Now you've mentioned uh, uh, earlier and in your writings, the importance of what you call critique, particularly what you've called uh, and is called imminent critique. Uh, which, and I'm going to quote you here, which is the process of understanding the world and its defects and potentialities from within rather than imposing it from without. So uh, uh, given that, uh, right now, uh, 
I'm going to bring a very practical example in. In response to recent concerns expressed in the US media about continuing threats to American democracy at home, uh, such as the recent challenges to the validity of the 2020 presidential elections results, you know, the Capitol insurrection in January 2021, and what's happening now with looks like the potential overturning of abortion rights by the Supreme Court, as well as what we've already talked about going on abroad, we continue to hear in, in our media, in the uh, US media, the terms democracy and our democracy being used extremely frequently. Uh, let me give you one example, and then, then I'm going to you because we're fast running out of time. Uh, on the PBS NewsHour on December 9th of last year, uh, news anchor Judy Woodruff said that the latest cover story of the Atlantic magazine, and I'm quoting her here, argues that the threat to the U.S. is coming from within as Republicans aligned with former President Trump work to upend a core of our democracy. I want to focus on that phrase that the president is chosen by the will of the voters. Keep that in mind too. And then I'm not gonna go into this in much detail, but there was a more recent broadcast on NBC where a correspondent uh, quoted House Speaker Nancy Pelosi as saying that uh, the people of Ukraine, and I'm quoting, are fighting for their democracy and our democracy. And then she added, quote, they're fighting for democracy writ large, end quote. We have to save our democracy no, no, that wasn't the end of the quote. And she, we have to save our, our own democracy, which is under assault in our country. So what I want to ask you is, you know, this is, I pay attention to the kind of language that's used on the media for reasons I won't go into. And these phrases are coming up almost daily, almost regardless of the story. But it, anyway, so as a critical theorist, how might you or one who is a critical theorist understand at a deeper level What's going on with the use of these phrases or tropes like our democracy, democracy? You know, what kinds of critical questions might we pose about the use of these terms and what does the use of these terms imply? I, well, I mean, there's a lot there. I can, yeah, say I know. Quickly, I know. We'll have to have part two. No, no. There, I can say really quickly, I think going yes. back to this idea that critical theory asks us to connect how we think and how we're told to think with how we act. I think the idea of whenever I, if I hear a phrase like our democracy, I would want to know whose democracy is this? Absolutely. Because Washington is deeply interpenetrated with, uh, the, with, with money and finance capital and um, this corruption. Um, so I think critical theory would ask us to say, what aspects of my life, of the lives I share with others, are democratic or not? How do I, how does, how does democracy, how is democracy practiced in my world? How much accountability do the people right. who have control over me have? How much, right. how often do I go to a civic meeting? What critical theory, remember, I think this is core. Critical theory is about what is real, not what is theoretical. Critical mm -hmm. theory wants to know if democracy is out there, then it should be a lived experience that we share Right. as living active beings right and to that extent to have people in the media tell you what your democracy is already right. indicates there's a fundamental alienation right and i just want to add uh we use the term when i say we i mean everyone in this society and even around the world uh but especially the media as the case in question indicates use the term democracy but what what are we really talking about that would be another whole show which i hope to do um, what is democracy? And so to me, that the use of a term like that implies that, quote, we, unquote, oh, yeah, we already know what democracy is, so we don't have to spell it out. But when it does get spelled out, if at all, it's connected with holding elections. So yes. that's as opposed to as opposed to, like I said before, as opposed to an actually lived life every day. Absolutely. At work with my children. How do I treat my wife? How do I treat nature? All right. of this is about how you humanize our life. Right, and just, yeah, thank you so much. And in wrapping up, anything more you would say about how uh, learning to think critically in the ways we've discussed can be important to us as American and world citizens? Why should it matter in today's think, world particularly? I think that if critical theory begs us to ask what is possible to live the new, 
to constantly experiment in our world and to constantly look for the for, for a transformed experience. Right. If we give that up and that's snuffed out, then we are left with we are we're left without life. We're left with the life that the powerful want to give us. Okay. And those are the two alternatives we have. Well, thank you so much. I'd like to end on your your uh, note of hope. Uh, and uh, that's all the time we have for today. We've been speaking with Michael J. Thompson, professor of theory at William Patterson University in New Jersey. Thanks so much for joining us today, Michael. Thanks for having me, Michael. I appreciate it. Thank you. You're so welcome. I'd love to have you back. Uh, this has been Thinking Things Through, Thinking Critically in Critical Times on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Michael Sukoff. Please do join us again two weeks from today at the same time, wherever you may be, or uh, you can always access the recorded video online once it's posted. Mahalo, and thanks to Jay Fidel and all the engineers and staff at Think Tech Hawaii who have made this program possible. Mahalo. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.